NCAA record with six field goals. Thirty-three thousand Mountaineer fans left the contest, assured that more records would fall as Villanova accepted a twenty-five to six defeat. Richmond was next to visit the Mountaineers, and fell swiftly to a maturing offensive attack as running back Kerry Marbury displayed on this fine twenty-three yard gain. Later. Flanker Danny Bug snags a pass in the flat and scampers 34 yards. Setting up this touchdown run by Marbury. It was Marbury again, this time on a brilliant 51 yard run breaking tackles and into the clear. But today, though the offense played well, the defense was outstanding. Big John Tree Adams puts on the stoppers on a would-be Richmond play. John Withers sacks the quarterback again. Linebacker Billy Joe Mantooth prevents any gain. Adams snags a pass attempt. Adams again makes the initial stop. Bob Sims forces the play out of bounds for no gain. John Spragans makes a believer of the quarterback with this sack for an eight yard loss. Again, Adams in his rookie season knocks down an intended pass. Finally, Frank Sampsa blocks Richmond's punt attempt capping off a successful 28 to 7 victory over hapless Richmond. The victorious Mountaineers next traveled by air to meet rival Virginia at Charlottesville. Bernie Galiffa prepared for what promised to be a game of passing. What promised to be was, as Galiffa's arm and Danny Bugs's hands paired for this first 78-yard catch-and-run touchdown, a combination to work countless times during the remainder of the season. Next, Galiffa, now under heavy attack, hits Marshall Mills for a 23-yard score. Galiffa then found Nate Stevens in the open, who fell over the end zone for the third score. Virginia's passing attack suffered from losing their ace quarterback in the first quarter, and outstanding defensive plays such as this one by John Hart Cherick on an interception in the second quarter. Galiffa found Bugs on the goal line for the fourth passing touchdown of the afternoon. Backup quarterback Abe Dillon replaced Galiffa late in the game and clicked with Mike Nelson on this fine 14-yard running score. On the final score of the day, Dillon hits Bernie Kirshner as the visiting Mountaineer fans look on. In all, the Mountaineers completed a phenomenal two-thirds of their passes and leaving the Cavaliers to tend to their mascot and battle wounds. The team next prepared for their trip to Stanford, California. A team manager supervises the loading procedure of the United Airlines charter jet, ensuring that all the equipment and personal effects of the team are well provided for. It was a bright sunny day as the Mountaineers boarded the aircraft and spirits were high in anticipation of the upcoming game. In all, some 125 persons, including the team, coaching staff, and cheerleaders. Air travel is always exciting, and the United Airlines staff goes out of their way to make their charter passengers comfortable in every way. The pilots chart their flight path. Next stop, California.
During the flight, there is always a kind of a party atmosphere as the craft is decked out in balloons and ribbons. Tasty meals are enjoyed by all. And of course, there's plenty of time to catch up on sleep. An extra day was allowed the Stanford trip in order for the players to become accustomed to the time change, the climate and playing surface at Stanford Stadium. Then, after the practice and strategy sessions, the Mountaineers retire to their motel to relax and wait for the game. An estimated 56,000 Californians and loyal West Virginians sat under the sunny 75 degree skies as cheerleader Kathy Mayfield urged the Mountaineers on. Following a Stanford score, running back Kerry Marbury in a reverse to Artie Owens and stuns the crowd with an electrifying 85-yard return, placing the ball on the Stanford two-yard line. <laughs> Then, two plays later, Marbury gets the call and sweeps left end for the score. It was Marbury again in the third quarter, this time returning a Stanford kickoff 41 yards, breaking a tackle and following superior Mountaineer blocking. Marcus Moley then took the ball eight yards for the touchdown. Much to the delight of the Mountaineer fan. In the fourth quarter, Marbury again scores from the Stanford one-yard line and, shortly thereafter, takes a handoff from Galifa setting up his next one-yard score. In the final score of the afternoon, Galifa finds Brian Childs open near pay dirt, but the time was a factor and West Virginia suffered its first defeat with the final score, Stanford 41, West Virginia 35. William and Mary visited Morgantown for homecoming. The two teams sized each other up for the first 10 minutes of the contest when deep in their own territory, William and Mary fumbled, Tree Adams recovered on the six yard line. The recovery apparently sparked the Mountaineers as one play later, Marbury fought his way across for the touchdown. West Virginia, now in high gear, scored touchdown after touchdown, beginning with this second quarter, 45-yard reception by Bugs, who raced the remaining 30 yards for a touchdown. Just two minutes later, Galefa again hit Bugs, this time for 17 yards and the score. With just six seconds to go in the first half, Mills seemingly pulls the ball out of a crowd and runs untouched for the third score of the quarter. Later, following a 70-yard sustained drive, Marbury goes the rest of the way for the fifth score of the afternoon, sliding to a comfortable halt. In the final quarter, Marbury brilliantly avoids three tackles and races 37 yards for yet another WVU tally. Finally, Danny Bugs made the patented flanker reverse work again, breaking tackles and following the sideline for the last touchdown of the afternoon. In all, the end was as a homecoming should be, with the Mountaineers prevailing 
49 to 34. West Virginia traveled to Philadelphia for their only night game of the season and was followed by a large contingency of Mountaineer fans. Galiffa and Nate Stevens clicked in the second quarter for this 17-yard move. Followed by Ron Lee's breakthrough, a beautiful hole for a 17-yard score. Later in the game, Galiffa capped and scored with a seven-yard effort. The coaches pondered the situation on the sideline as Johnny Billets intercepts a temple pass and returns the ball 18 yards. Then in the next quarter, Tom Zakowski comes up with an interception and returns it 10 yards. Again, West Virginia intercepted, this time by Tom Geishauser at a five yard return. The Mountaineers were down, but certainly not counted out. In the fourth quarter, when Marbury went over for a four yard score. And then for 12 yards to put the Mountaineers up by five points. Temple, however, was able to score again late in the game, upsetting the Mountaineers 39 to 36. West Virginia played at home the next week facing a determined Tulane squad. Quarterback Bernie Galiffa kept his poise beautifully when under pressure he hit Marbury for this nice 13 yard gainer. Followed by Lee's quick two yard score. Lee does an instant replay several minutes later. Then, less than two minutes later, Bugs took a two-lane punt from his own five-yard line and raced the 95 yards to the end zone, breaking tackles and the WVU record for punt returns. Early in the third quarter, Marbury scampered six yards for six points. Along with the offensive attack, the WVU secondary stood out against Tulane with a total of five interceptions, beginning with Zakowski. Then Doug Charlie. Then Charlie again with a miraculous catch. David Morris takes his turn. And finally, with only seconds to go in the game, Rich Weiskircher grabs the day's last interception and puts the final touch on a well-executed game enjoyed by all, including the WVU doggy mascot, Rebel. The Mountaineer weekend festivities culminated with the biggest rivalry of the year, pitting the Mountaineers and the Nittany Lions of Penn State. Chris Schenkel and Bud Wilkinson of ABC Sports were on hand to nationally telecast the event. The fans got ready for the opening kickoff. Kerry Marbury took the boot in his own end zone and then streaked for 100 yards untouched for the longest kick return of the West Virginia season and the quickest score of any West Virginia game with time elapsed only 13 seconds.
WVU recovered this Penn State fumble deep in their own territory, but even though one official ruled a West Virginia recovery, the headlinesman ruled that Penn State had scored. Slow motion viewing of the official game film revealed that Penn State advanced the ball no further than the two yard line where West Virginia had recovered. In the second quarter, Galefa threw to Boggs who blasted his way into the end zone. Then in the third quarter, Galefa heaved one to Boggs who was shoved out of the way by the state defender. This placed the ball on the one yard line and enabled Brian Childs to ram over for the score. The Mountaineers were unable to better their score from that point, however, and dropped a disappointing game to the Nittany Lions with the final score, Penn State 28, West Virginia 19. West Virginia next traveled to Pitt Stadium for the traditional matchup with the Panthers. It was no contest, however, as Pitt was outclassed this day. Marbury races over for the first WVU score. Next, an alert Dennis Reed recovers a Pitt fumble. Galefa finds Nate Stevens in the end zone. Marbury powers his way in for the score. Galefa again finds Stevens open for the touchdown. And finally, Marbury goes around in for the last score of the day, leaving Pitt fans with little to do but plan for next year's encounter. The Mountaineers next faced old conference rival Virginia Military Institute, who were hoping for an upset victory to give them some national recognition. West Virginia was ready to go for the home fans. Marbury took a Galefa pass in the right flat and went 68 yards for the first score. Shortly thereafter, VMI was forced to punt from deep in its own territory. Danny Bugs took the kick and returned it 52 yards with a brilliant key block from Nate Stevens. <laughs> then in the second quarter, Charlie intercepts a VMI pass. The interception set up another Bugs flanker reverse, good for 55 yards and six points. Then Marbury over from the two. Artie Owens scores on a similar play. And finally, Marcus Money made it on another two-yard scoring play, giving the Mountaineers their largest tally of the year, 50 points to BMI's 24. The Mountaineers played their final game of the year against a strong Syracuse team, always a powerhouse in the East. Coaches knew that a well-balanced offense and defense would be necessary to put the Orangemen away. As well, any postseason bowl bids would depend on the outcome of this game. Pre-game practice polished off the and his staff. Soon, the plays were ready and the tape was in place. 
West Virginia has always drawn a fine crowd, and the day, well, this day was no exception. In excess of 30,000 mountaineer devoted watched as Galepa pumped once, then hit bugs for a beautifully executed 44-yard catch and run touchdown. Then in the second quarter, while everyone thought Bugs was running his patented flanker reverse, Galefa kept the ball and rolled right, waited for seeming hours, then uncorked a pass to flying Nate Stevens, who took the ball into the end zone. To the disbelief of all who witnessed. In the third period, Childs rammed over from the one. Then Bugs took the handoff from Galippa for the flanker reverse and with some fancy footwork, eluded half the Orangemen for the touchdown. Galippa set another passing record with this threaded needle to Marshall Bills in the end zone for the most touchdowns passing in a West Virginia season. This one went for 24 yards. Shortly thereafter, Frank Sampsa dumped the Syracuse quarterback for a four-yard loss. Then, as if to cap off a nearly storybook rookie season, Danny Bugs, with only three minutes remaining on the clock, puts the icing on the cake with this tremendous 80-yard broken field run for the score. All that remained was for Aid Dillon to maintain control of the ball and wait for the clock to run out, finishing a beautiful West Virginia victory and rounding out a great 8-3 winning season and an invitation to return to Atlanta, Georgia for the Peach Bowl.